best friends hiking in the wilderness of Delphi, seeking adventure only to be torn from life and slain by an unknown perpetrator. Despite some remarkable evidence, their killer remains unidentified. Tonight on Dark Curiosities, The Delphi Murders, Abigail Williams and Liberty German. 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German were best friends who were inseparable. It was the 13th of February 2017 when the school they had been attending, Delphi Community Middle School, was closed for the day. Wishing to make the most of the pleasant weather, the girls asked Liberty's grandmother, Becky, for permission to go hiking, to which she agreed, on the condition that the pair would secure transport to and from the trail. Wishing to make the most of the pleasant weather, the girls asked Liberty's grandmother, Becky, for permission to go hiking, to which she agreed, on the condition that the pair would secure transport to and from the trail. It was arranged for Libby's sister, Kelsey, to drop them off, and her father, Derek, would come and pick them up once he had finished running errands. Derek promised that he would call them once he'd arrived, to take them home, and he would be away for no longer than two hours. At approximately 1.45pm, Kelsey dropped Abby and Libby off at the abandoned Monon High Bridge at the Delphi Historic Trail in Indiana. The young teenagers enjoyed their afternoon together, talking, laughing, taking pictures and uploading content to the popular application Snapchat. Libby uploading a picture of Abby on the Monon High Bridge at 2.09pm. It seemed that all was well, just two friends having fun in each other's company. At 11 minutes past 3pm, Derek texted Liberty to let her know that he was on his way to collect them at their arranged meeting point. Derek arrived a few minutes later and his daughter and her friend were nowhere to be found. He became unsettled after the minutes ticked by with no sight of the girls. Now panicked, he began texting Libby and making several call attempts, but to no avail. Then he phoned his mother, Becky, to inform her of what was going on. Family members tried to phone Liberty, however, the phone just kept ringing. At 4pm, Becky called her husband, Mike, who was at work, to make him aware of the situation. It wasn't long until Mike drove up the trail and began searching for the girls. Upon their initial search, the family kept a positive attitude, hoping that Liberty had perhaps lost or accidentally broken her phone, or the pair had just gotten lost and that they would be found safe. They scoured the surrounding trail, yet there was still no sign of either Abigail or Liberty. The teenagers were officially reported missing shortly after 5pm. By 6pm, as darkness fell, authorities had arrived on the scene, and they, alongside over 100 local volunteers, began searching the hiking trail throughout the night. Around noon on the 14th of February, following an extensive search, the bodies of Abigail Williams and Liberty German were discovered, about a half mile from the bridge, not far from the north bank of Deer Creek. Police have never revealed how they lost their lives, but what they did release to the public was nothing more than spine-chilling. Liberty German had captured images on her phone of a middle-aged Caucasian man walking on the trail. He was wearing a blue windbreaker, blue jeans, a brown hat, at times this was wrongly identified as his hair, brown boots and a hooded sweatshirt. It was also speculated that he was in possession of a fanny pack which could have contained weapons. In July, a witness came forward believing that they had seen this man. They were confident that he was between 5 foot 6 inches and 5 foot 10 inches, weighing between 180 and 220 pounds, did not have blue eyes and had reddish brown hair. The most compelling evidence in the investigation was audio which Liberty had recorded on her phone. A three second segment was released to the public which was of a male, presumably the person of interest in the photographs, commanding for them to go down the hill. The entirety of the recording captured Abigail and Libby's final moments of life. Authorities explained that the recording started off with the friends discussing normal girl stuff, talking and laughing. When they noticed the man on the bridge, their tone suddenly changed and it seemed that they were anxious and uneasy, sensing that something was awry. 
The bridge itself was 63 feet high and took little time to cross, however the girls lingered for a while, and it was when the suspect edged closer towards them, Liberty managed to conceal her phone and catch the man on tape. A sloping hill lies next to the abandoned train bridge, which is where the man is thought to have referenced with his down-the-hill remark. The bodies of the girls were found in shallow water by the creek, and it had not been 100% determined as to how they ended up in that location. Some theorise that whilst crossing over the creek, the man murdered them. Others speculate that the girls were already deceased and then dragged into the water by the killer, or they perhaps turned around and went the long route towards the creek when they came across the man again. The man may have been a local who knew the trails well, but nobody from the area has come forward, leading some to believe he may have been a hunter and not a resident of Delphi or even the state of Indiana. There is no evidence as to how the suspect departed from the crime scene. Locals of Delphi speculate about the possibility that the girls may have been catfished by someone posing as a teenager on Snapchat and had arranged to meet up, whereas others think it was merely a random attack by a stranger. Daniel J. Nations was made a person of interest by authorities after being apprehended by police at a traffic stop in Colorado, where it was discovered that he had a hatchet and a .22 caliber rifle in his car and had threatened a person on a mountain hiking trail. He was also a suspect in the murder of biker Timothy Watkins a fortnight prior. However, since he was not legally accused, nothing has come of this. Nations was a registered sex offender and had petty offences and domestic violence listed on his criminal record. He was residing in Indiana, beneath Indiana 67 Bridge in Morgan County, registered as homeless. He had attended a weekly check-up on Valentine's Day when the girls' bodies were found, and although he was still a person of interest, police believed he was probably not the murderer. In early January 2017, Daniel Nations pleaded guilty to menacing and was handed a three-year sentence on supervised probation. Nations was transferred from Colorado to Indiana custody in January 2018 and in February, the police announced that Daniel Nations was no longer considered a suspect in the Delphi murders. In August 2017, police obtained DNA from the crime scene and more audio, however they have not commented any further on these. The families of Abigail Williams and Liberty German jointly announced that there are currently plans for a $1 million sports complex to be built in Delphi in memory of their daughters. Liberty German's mother has requested that homeowners across central Indiana have orange light bulbs installed on their front porches, both to honour the lives of the victims and to act as a reminder that their killer remains at large. The case remains active and authorities are responding to various leads and tips and we can only hope that one day justice will be served and the families will finally have answers and closure. As of 2018, Indiana authorities believe that they are now on the cusp of capturing the murderer.